Good morning. Grace and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And welcome to Round Hill United Methodist Church on this Epiphany Sunday. Sunday in which we celebrate the sign that was given to the wise men, the good news of Jesus' birth. And we celebrated ourselves the good news of the signs that God continues to send to us this very day. And so we're glad that you are with us, uh, whether you're here in person or joining us online uh, we're glad that you can worship with us this morning. If you are online with us this morning, uh, you can be part of this uh, time together, especially through the uh, comments section. Uh, later in the service, when we lift up our joys and our concerns, the comments section is a way in which you can share those prayers. Uh, we'll be able to actually see them and share them together as the body of Christ. And so uh, that comment section allows you to stay connected throughout this service uh, and allows us to be one. And so I invite you to use that as often as you would like. Uh, today, uh, again, we will be worshiping and celebrating this Epiphany Sunday, and so as we prepare for this time together, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for this time that you have given us. In the midst of the busyness of the Christmas season, the new year, you call us together to celebrate to stop and to see the ways in which you are in our midst, the ways in which you are calling us into life with you. Help us to see those signs, to have our own epiphany moment this moment, this morning, and to see the ways in which we can celebrate the good news that Christ is born. Good news not just of something that happened 2,000 years ago, but something for us this very day. And so let us celebrate this morning. Help us to celebrate through all that we do, our prayers, our reading of your holy word, the singing, and of course, through holy communion. And all this we pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. This time as we continue to lift up our praise, I invite us to do so through the singing of our first hymn, it is Sing We Now of Christmas. It's page 237 in our hymnal, and it'll be on your screen as well. And I invite you to stand as you are able and sing Sing We Now of Christmas. <coughs> sing We Now of Christmas, no else sing we hear. Hear our grateful praises to the babe so dear. Sing we Noel, the King is born Noel. Sing we now of Christmas, sing we now Noel. Angels call to shepherds, leave your flocks at rest. Journey forth to Bethlehem, find the child so blessed. Sing we Noel, the King is born Noel. Sing we now of Christmas, sing we now Noel. In Bethlehem they found him, Joseph Mary Miles. Seated by the manger, watching the holy child. Sing we Sing we now the well. From the eastern country came the kings of war, bearing gifts to Bethlehem, guided by a star. Sing we the well, the king is born the well. Sing we now a Christmas, sing we now the they took their gifts of greatest price. There was never a stable so like paradise. Sing we Noel, the King is born Noel. Sing we now a Christmas, sing we now Noel. Amen. You may be seated.
That familiar story comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, of Judea for it has been written by the prophets, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is the shepherd, my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. But when they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite the children at this time, if they would like to come up for a children's message, uh, they can do so at this time. How are y'all doing today? Good. Y'all have a good Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. So today, we are learning about signs. Do you know what a sign is? Yeah. Uh-huh. What is, what's that? Sign language and the signs of the road. So what does a sign do? It tells you what to do. Yeah, Hunter? Or what to do in your car. Or stop. So in your car, when you see signs that say 45, what does that mean? 45 miles per hour. That tells you how fast you're supposed to go. What about this sign up here? Do you know what this sign is for? Exit. In case there's a fire, you know there's an exit there and two exits there, right? Those signs are telling us where we can leave. What if I was to do this? What does this sign mean? Quiet. Oh, does it? That's awesome. So signs tell us things. You know, in our uh, story today, we hear about a sign. You know what the sign is? Let's keep that down. A star. And do you know what the star was a sign of? Yes, Jesus was born. And you know who saw that sign? The wise men. So they saw that sign, and they followed the sign, just like we can follow the exit sign that tells us that's how you go, or we follow the driving signs that say stop or go or turn here. The the star was a sign that told them that Jesus was born and where to find him. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's what the sign did. The sign led them to find Jesus. Yeah. Uh, We did this, and and it did quiet. That's great. Can I do one more sign? Do you know what this sign is? Pray. So we're going to pray together, okay? All right. Lord, we give you thanks for the signs that you give us, the sign that we are able to celebrate today, that Jesus has come 
and that we are thankful for the ways in which you are in our lives. Give us signs that we may see your love through people, through things, through all that we have to be thankful for. And this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you all. Will you all join me in a word of prayer? May the words of my mouth and meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So if you've ever looked out at the night sky, you've probably marveled at the very same thing that the ancient civilizations have marveled at as they looked at it nightly. We've marveled at the, the stars that span across the sky, so many that we cannot count them. It, it really is a, a beautiful wonder for us to behold. And it's such an amazing thing that the ancient civilizations, as they saw this each night, they would actually begin to chart them. They would follow them and, and see them and begin to predict and to know when they would appear, where these stars would appear. We probably know of some of them as we look up in the skies ourselves. We probably know some of these constellations, these clusterings of stars as they appear. Probably heard of Taurus the bull, Leo the lion, Gemini the twins. We probably have been lucky enough to wake up early or be uh, be, uh, up late enough to, to see a planet or two. Maybe Venus, the goddess of love, or uh, Mars, the, the god of war. As we can tell from these names, the celestial bodies that we look up at were more for these ancient civilizations than just something to study and admire as some sort of scientific exploration. This was more than just looking at the sky and trying to number what stars were there, trying to figure out what was beyond our own world. When they looked at the skies, they saw them as the heavens. They saw them as a a representation of the gods beyond them. Different ancient civilizations had this understanding of it. They would read the stars. And it was said that certain people who had these gifts could read them to say what, to find out what the gods were speaking to them. Sometimes to be able to read the past, the present, or the future. Now, we may be more familiar with the Greek constellations or the Roman planets and things like that, but the truth is that some of the more original gatherings or people who would study these were the Babylonians. They were some of the, the first that we know about that were the ones who would look and, and observe the stars that do this kind of astrology. It would go back as far as possibly the Bronze Age, which is really interesting when we look at our scripture for today. Because in our scripture, what we have is a group of magi or wise men, essentially people who have lived their whole lives studying the stars, doing this whole astrology thing, divining what the gods would say to them, coming from the east, which would be from this area of what was former Babylon. What we have are people using the very gifts and knowledge and and ideas that they have grown up with to see a special sign that had been given to them. They looked into the sky, and what they see is a star that seems out of place, a star that didn't seem to fit the rest of everything that they have calculated before, and as they read it, what they found is a sign that the king of the Jews had been born. You know, it's interesting to me when I I think about this now, you know, my whole life I've kind of always pictured uh, the Christmas star as this big glowing ball in the sky, and I've wondered how did people miss that, right? You're like, how did people miss a big glowing ball in the sky and say, hey, let's, let's look at that and see where it leads? 
You know, I've pictured in my mind uh, like the light glowing and, and shining right down on this small uh, little stable that the, the Holy Family is on and, and just say like, how could so many people ignore that? And maybe that was the case. But what might be interesting that we find through this understanding is it could also be a star just like any other star. It could be a star that many of us would not have perceived as we looked in the night sky, as we looked at the hundreds of thousands of stars that we see in the sky, but that those who have dedicated their lives to looking and studying and seeing all these different changes would have noticed immediately. That those who have studied what was going on in the night sky would have pointed out and said, that is something different. And as they read it, they read it for what it was. The king of the Jews had been born. Now, this is an interesting reading of, of the, the Epiphany story for me, and I, I really al- have always loved the Epiphany story. One, because the Epiphany story tells us of God's coming to us and, and speaking to us through the very means that we, we know. He speaks to these foreigners, to these magi to these wise men through stars, through the things that they have grown up learning. And he speaks to these foreigners, these non-Jewish people, and tells them the good news that Christ is born. It's such a wonderful story of, of telling the good news of Christ's birth to all the world. But part of what I also love about this epiphany story is that so much as we think about epiphany as being this aha moment, right? We we normally think of the word epiphany as being this instantaneous, I I fully understand now, I got it. The epiphany story doesn't follow that. The star as it appears is not the end of the epiphany story, it is the beginning. It's the beginning of the story. As we look at the story itself, they, they see the star, they read it, but they don't just say to themselves, hey, that's cool. The king of the Jews has been born. All right, let's go back to work. I mean, it, it's not just this intellectual understanding for them. It's a manifestation, which is, is what the, the word epiphany means. It's something that they have realized that God has come into the world and they are moved to do something about it. They're moved to go. They don't fully understand at this time what's happening. They, they see a sign that the king of the Jews has been born and they go and follow. This is where I, I love to watch the story as it unfolds because they go and follow and where do they go? They go to King Herod's place, right? They go to King Herod's because where would the king of the Jews be born but the palace? This is where they're following their journey. It's not this aha moment where they know everything about Jesus and the Holy Family and everything like that. They go to find Herod. And when they find Herod, what they find is Herod has no idea what they're talking about. Herod has no clue. In fact, Herod's a little miffed about it because that would be a threat to him if somebody else was a king. And so Herod calls his scribes and they look through the scriptures and they find, oh yeah, there does say something that there's going to be a king from Bethlehem. And so now they have two signs, the sign of the star and the sign of the scriptures pointing them towards Bethlehem. And they continue on their journey. They continue on their journey heading towards Bethlehem, still trying to figure out what does this all mean. And they continue until they see again that star resting over Bethlehem, And they've realized this is is it. All these things are pointing to this moment. And they find that baby there. They find Mary. They find the royal family. And they're overwhelmed with joy. They're overwhelmed with joy because they've been led through this journey, starting with the star that says the king has been born and now coming to realize what this truly means. Not the king of King Herod, but a baby boy in a lowly manger in the city of Bethlehem. And they pay him homage. They give him all the finest things the king would deserve. 
gold and frankincense and myrrh. And then having another sign or vision, they head back another way so King Herod doesn't know. Part of the amazing part of the Epiphany story is that, again, it's not simply this aha moment where they see the star and fully understand the divinity of Christ or the full knowledge of what's going on in the universe. It's a part where God comes to us. God speaks to us through what we know and calls us on a journey to following him. And that's the exciting part, that they take that journey, they take that step, they take that leap and follow, and they find the good news that Christ has been born, not just king of the Jews, but king for all the world, king for them as well. It's so fitting that Epiphany comes at the end of Christmas because Christmas is the celebration of this manifestation. It's a celebration of God coming to us. It's a celebration of God seeking us out so that we may know him. And so when we come to Epiphany at the end of this great celebration of God becoming us, God seeking us out, the Epiphany story is a reminder that we, we don't just sit with that. We don't just pack it away with our Christmas decorations and say, well, that was fun until next year. The Epiphany story reminds us that this is a moment that calls us to follow, to move, to enter into this journey in which God has reached out to us and so we go and follow this God. It's this amazing moment of a reminder that God loves us so much that he continues to reach out to us and that he does so through these miraculous signs that are signs for you and me. That the sign is a star in the sky that was something that maybe not everybody would have been able to see, but that these astrologers essentially did. And it makes us wonder today, where are we missing these simple signs? Where is God reaching out to us and we're just oblivious to it because we've kind of put it all away? What in our normal day-to-day -day lives, things that we are looking for, this miraculous sign of a glowing star in the sky, cause us to miss the simpleness of God speaking to us through the very things that we know? That's what I love about the Epiphany story. That God speaks to us through the very things that we know. And so he speaks to us today still. It might not be a star. It might not be this great sign in the sky. It might be your neighbor next door. It might be something at work. It might be the Jacksonville Jaguars making it to the playoffs. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but it's a sign. And it's a great thing for us to be able to see in these little things that God is at work still today, reaching out to us, and that calls us to reach back out and follow him. Amen. With that, I invite us to join in singing our next song, it's a beautiful song about that star. It's a, called a, There's a Song in the Air. It's 249, and our hymnal will also be on the screen and on the screen for you at home. And I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing There's a Song in the Air. There's a song in the air there's a star in the sky, there's a mother's deep prayer, and a baby's little cry. And the star rains its fire while the beautiful sing, for the manger of Bethlehem cradles the king. There's a tumult of joy. For the wonderful birth, for the virgin sweet boy, is the 
Lord of the earth. I the sovereign tips far while the beautiful sing. For the manger at Bethlehem cradles the king. In the light of that star, by the angels in proud, and the song from afar has swept over the world. Every heart is a flame and a beautiful sing. In the homes of the nation that Jesus is King. We rejoice in the light and we echo the song that comes down through the night from the heavenly throne. There is shout to the lovely evangel they bring and we greet in his cradle our Savior and King. Amen. You may be seated. At this moment, we celebrate a God who is with us, who is present with us, and we do it by lifting up our prayers. And so at this time, I invite uh, those who are worshiping with us online, you can go ahead and in the comment section, send any joys or concerns that you may have uh, as a, a moment of prayer, and we'll be able to share those in just a moment. But we'll begin with those here in person. Are there any joys or concerns that we would like to lift up this morning? Absolutely. Prayers uh, for uh, Riley and her group as they travel in Greece. Um, Christ was the opposite of her surgery was successful. Um, she had a health scare yesterday. She told me it was going to stop her. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she had a test and has both positive. Praises for uh, Kathy's surgery. Uh, that went well. Uh, in celebration of her, her birthday. Um, so happy birthday gift for her. Um, but also happy birthday to Janet Heston. We lift that up as a, a praise. For your Girl Scouts. And uh, I guess my daughter knows how to make a, a selfless plug for Girl Scout cookies. So that is uh, wonderful. But it is a joy. She is very excited and happy. And uh, we know from the Girl Scouts that are here the wonderful things that they do in the community. So uh, we do lift that up. Mm. Pray for Brent's brother-in-law who uh, passed away unexpectedly this week. I'll pray for my friend Linda who just uh, received a new heart. Prayers for Sue's friend Linda who just received a new heart. Prayers for our members of our military and it's Wonderful to see one of them here with us this morning, and uh, welcome home. Praise for your grandma. Praise for your grandma. Any others here in person? If not, do we have any online that we would like to lift up? Yes. Um, from Glenda Pearsall, prayers for Ernie Smith as he recovers from double bypass surgery. From Jennifer Malfair, please, please pray for safe travels for Ella as she travels to Scotland for a semester. And for my stepfather, Jerry, who travels to Italy to coach football for six months. Um, from Carol Yvonne, lift up Lauren. Uh, Heather Clark, we would like to lift up a family member as they enter a more difficult chapter in their life. From Nancy Ehrenholt, prayers for safe travels for Andre and David Ehrenholt traveling from Peru to visit. Uh, from Kathy Lutman, praise and thanksgiving for a successful cancer surgery and my wonderful church family who has been so supportive. Uh, from Nancy Ehrenholt, continued prayers for Leon Costello who was very ill in the hospital. Absolutely, thank you. 
As we lift all of these up, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we give you thanks that you are with us, that you give us these signs for us to see each day of your presence. Sometimes those signs are the presence of one another with us during our difficulties and with our celebrations. And it's so good that we are able to share as one these prayers together. And so we lift up the joys of birthdays, successful surgeries, the joys of Girl Scouts and scouting, the the joys of uh, travel and those who are able to be home. But we also pray for those who are recovering from surgeries, those who have and are continuing to battle with cancer, those who are battling with dementia or Alzheimer's, heart disease, diabetes, those who face depression, anxiety, or even thoughts of suicide, those battling with addiction, Lord, be with all of them. Give them strength and comfort and help them to see the signs of your presence in whatever ways you are able to break through. And Lord, we give thanks for our community here and pray that you are with those who are suffering, those who are in need of food, shelter, those who are in need of just your compassion. We pray for our nation as we continue to see just horrible division amongst us. And we pray for unity. We pray for those afflicted across the world, those who are still battling from the effects of war, the loss of loved ones, those facing famine, those forced from home and trying to find a place to lay their head. All these things, Lord, we lift up to you asking us as your church, not just here in Round Hill, but your worldwide church, to be those beacons of light that share your good news. And as we speak of your church, we pray for the United Methodist Church, particularly at the beginning of this year, as we celebrate new bishops who have moved, including our former bishop who is now in Mississippi, our new bishop who is beginning just this past week, And we pray for a new bishop in Florida who we know from our own area, Reverend Tom Berlin, who is now Bishop Tom Berlin. We pray for them all and for those conferences who receive them. And all these things we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, as we gather around the table, I invite you to hear this invitation that Christ gives us, that Christ the Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now, as people have experienced that forgiveness and love, I invite you to offer it to one another as we pass the peace. If you're online, you can do it through the comments section with words like, peace of Christ be with you. But let us pass the peace to one another.
And now as a forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. I invite the ushers to come forward as we give of our tithe and of our offering. Lord, we give you thanks for these gifts. We take, we ask that you take them and use them. Transform this place, transform this community, transform your world so all may know and hear and see the good news that your Son is with us. As we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us in captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. 
God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always by the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim that mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by your blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world. Till Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with that confidence of children, let us pray as Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ is given for you. And the blood of Christ is poured out for you. The table of our Lord is prepared. It's not my table. It's not the United Methodist Church's table. It is the Lord's table, and all are invited to come and experience his grace at this table. We'll do this in a means called intinction. All that simply means is I'll hand you a piece of bread, and you can take it and dip it into the cup. We have a gluten-free option, and this will be up uh, in the front as well. And there are also some prepackaged elements near the tree. If that is something that uh, you are more comfortable with as well, you can grab them as you come by. Uh, we will begin with this side over here. Um, and at this time, I invite my assistant to come forward. Come um, taste and see that the Lord is good. But if Christ is given for you.
For our benediction, there are just a couple of announcements to lift up. Uh, the first announcement is that uh, with this being Epiphany, although we celebrate God's presence with us on earth all the time, uh, the now officially Christmas season is over and the decorations will be coming down. Uh, and we invite everybody uh, who is able to help to stay and help with the decorations coming down today. Uh, so uh, that will be happening after worship. If you are able to stay, uh, that would be wonderful to help. Uh, also, we are gauging interest uh, in another confirmation class. And so if uh, you have uh, someone who is of the confirmation age and is interested in going through the class, this will again uh, be in uh, joint with uh, Bethany and maybe even some of the other churches in Western Loudoun. Uh, let me know, Pastor at Round Hill UMC, and we'll uh, try to get one of those classes going if we have enough interest. And finally, speaking of the youth, uh, we have a new youth minister, uh, Tracy Reynolds, and uh, we are having kind of a wonderful welcome tonight, uh, game night at 4 o'clock at Bethany UMC. I would just invite all uh, youth uh, to come out and just uh, get to know her and to have fun with one another. Uh, this is an opportunity for, again, Western Loudoun uh, youth to kind of get together as a, a group. Uh, you're probably already at schools together and now to celebrate and to uh, worship God together as well. And so that's 4 o'clock uh, today at Bethany UMC in Percival. Any other announcements we want to lift up? Thank you church council meeting Tuesday at 7 on Zoom. Any others? If not, then I invite you to go forth into the world knowing that God is with you and that the signs that God sends us to, sh to remind us of God's presence aren't always this glowing star in the sky for us all to see, but are everyday reminders that might just be for you and me to notice. So go forth in your everyday life attuned, aware of where God may be at work and follow. 
enter into that journey that God is calling you on. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.